Hey guys, so what's happening? Uh, figured tonight we would go ahead and get started on this rod. A couple weeks ago, I showed you all the custom rods that I've been building. Told you I would take you through my latest uh, rod build and in case this is something you want to do. So it's it's not real hard. Uh, I learned it and um, you know I, I did have a little experience like building golf clubs and stuff like that. And uh, actually, this was something I, I considered doing probably in my 20s and, and just never got into it. Didn't think I had the talent to do it or whatever. And trust me, you do. All you need is just a little bit of patience. And, you know, now we have YouTube. So, you know, you can uh, go watch. If, if you don't like how I explain it, there's plenty of people who can explain to you how to build a rod. So we're going to build this red rod and I'm going to walk you through laying it out. Um, couple of little prep things we have to do and then gluing it up and we'll have to let it dry overnight to continue on. Okay, I'm still learning all this video stuff here. So uh, kind of funny, I'm using my little Actavon camera that my wife got me for Christmas to, to shoot down so you guys can see what I'm, I'm looking at. And I'm just using my phone to uh, talk to you guys. So if it comes in and out, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll try to do as much editing as I possibly can. But uh, the, the first thing that we do with the rod is we go ahead and kind of lay it out. So we, we in the spinning rod, and, and this is a split grip um, arrangement that I'm, I'm doing right now. And so let me go over the parts that we have here. So we have our butt cap, which goes on the end of the blank. We have a winding check, which I've already you know, kind of put butted up against that. It's just a little rubber ring. You can get them in aluminum and some other materials to, to you know, get more and more fancy. They, they come in colored silicone, this black rubber, and, you know, even aluminum. The aluminum ones, you've got to be dead money on where you're putting it on the blank and know exactly that diameter. So I haven't gotten into those yet. Probably will one day, um, but I just haven't done it because these little rubber ones kind of fit the, <laughs> fit the bill right now. Uh, so I've got, you know, three of those that what they do is they keep the water out of where you've put the glue. And uh, so, and plus they're a little bit decorative. I think they, you know, make a nicer transition. Uh, I have the, the uh, bottom of the grip. Um, the, I can't remember exactly what that's called. Then I have the, the foregrip that goes uh, above the reel seat. And I have the reel seat. So what I typically try to do is, is, is on a split grip, I try to have about somewhere around a foot, um, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less to, you know, where that reel is, is going to be centered up. Um, maybe there's a scientific way to, to do that, but it, I looked at several factory rods that we have, they're split grip, and that seems to be right about, you know, where it, where it belongs. So I like to just kind of leave it there. Uh, that seems to work well. It gives you enough leverage when you're making a cast. And it also gives us a little bit of a uh, way to, to do some decorative stuff down at the bottom of the rod, which I really like to do. And uh, we'll go over some of those things. Uh, one thing that's a little bit different, and, and you guys will be doing this with me the first time, is uh, if you look at a real seat, <clears throat> It is actually, you know, quite a bit larger than the rod. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on camera, you know, but basically there's a ton of slop, right? So typically what I've done is I've put tape arbors. So I'll, I'll just take masking tape and wrap it around the blank, you know, until I get the uh, thickness that I need that that, that uh, real seat slides down perfectly. But they actually sent me in my kit, they sent me this arbor, which uh, actually fits perfect, you know, on the real seat and, get, and will give us a good, nice, snug, you know, fit. And I have not used one of these before, but I'm, I'm kind of excited to do it because if you look at, at the typical workflow that I have is I will typically glue the back end of the grip on first. And then what I have to do is I have to stop gluing. I have to wipe that th this part of the rod down. And then I build the tape arbors up. And then I have to glue that. Typically, I run out of glue. I never mix enough. And so then I have to mix some more glue. And then I can install, you know, the, the foregrip and the butt cap. 
and all those winding checks and I've got to clean up the blank, you know, each time it seems like. So I'm, I'm actually kind of excited that, you know, this might actually change my workflow a little bit, you know, make it a little bit easier on me. The, the thing I'll have to figure out is, is if you look right here, you know, you can see part of my fingers have gone in there. I'm not exactly sure, you know, where to, uh, where that's going to end up. Um, one of the other things that's a little bit different is if you see, you know, this, uh, the foregrip here has a piece that fits into the real seat. And I actually had to take a knife, you know, just one of these like sheetrock knives and, you know, trim it off until I felt like I had the right fit. So, um, those are little things sometimes you have to do. Um, also, we're going to go over this. I actually got the reamers. Um, we actually will probably ream some of these EVA uh, grips out so that we don't have to glue as far up the blank. What often happens with uh, gluing, you know, these is I, I've actually, the, the first videos that I watched, and, I, and I've done this, um, is a lot of times, you know, these, these back grips will be maybe halfway down the blank. And so what you have to do is, is put glue all the way up there, you know, slide this thing down and, and basically the glue is still, you know, is above the, you know, where this thing slides down. You just take it and you push down as hard as you can, you know, with the butt, you know, firmly on the, on the floor and you just keep working this thing down until it slides in place. Well, I've had a few problems where, you know, it was just too tight. You know, even with the, the lubrication of the, uh, the, the propase glue, <laughs> you couldn't get it down there. And, uh, or actually probably what was worse was they, they tell you, if you're going to do that, do not stop. I stopped and it will not move anymore. You have to keep moving. So I think what I'm going to do with these, I think I'm going to take these reamers and, and actually ream them out a little bit. So they're actually pretty close to the right, you know, diameter. And then, you know, get that thing, you know, slid down. So what I typically will do is, you know, I'll get my layout, you know, kind of started here. Um, and I've, I've already taken a China marker. And you can just get these at, at mud hole. Um, not sure which way it's going to be best to see it. Whether you're going to see it from above or, or in front here. But just take a little China marker and, you know, kind of get the, um, you know, get the idea of the layout. And then I just try to try to use this China marker to mark, you know, where I'm actually going to put, you know, each of my components. So I kind of get an idea of that. And uh, that will, you know, get you kind of straightened out from from where everything's going to have to go. Really, the first mark, you know, this one where you where you slide the grip down on, that's the important one. You know, once you get that in there, you know, the rest of them, they just they just they just butt up against it, so it's not a real problem after that. Uh, the other thing that you do have to consider is whether or not you're gonna do uh, an up locking. So in other words, the, the reel is gonna screw up to lock the reel in place, or is it gonna be down locking? Um, I'm, I've gotten to where on a spinning reel, I'm, I'm doing a lot of up locking. Uh, I catch myself you know, accidentally backing the reel off a little bit um, by doing it the other way. And so I think I'm going to do the up locking on this one. So I'm going to make it kind of in, in this fashion right here. So anyway, that's kind of the, the gist of just laying out the rod. And uh, once you get this, then what we're going to do is we're going to spine the rod. And, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a second. But I've got to reposition all the cameras and hope I've got the right lighting in here for you guys to see that. I've already got a piece of tape on here, so hopefully it'll come out okay where you can kind of see it. And, uh, but if not, I'll at least talk you through it. Okay, so the, once we've kind of gotten the layout established, really what we need to do is spine the rod. So believe it or not, even though this, this blank looks round, it's actually not perfectly round. There is actually um, two spines actually usually on a blank there is a, a, a more prominent one. I can't remember the exact name of it, but there's a more prominent one. And then there's one that's a little less prominent. And so there's a way that you actually do this. I'm probably going to have to, you know, talk you through this and then I'll, I'll shoot a better angle 
so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But what, what you want to do is, is find the spine. And then what you want to do is, is with a, a spinning rod, you actually want the more, more prominent spine along the top of the rod and the guides on the bottom. So that gives you a little bit of extra backbone you know, in the rod. With a bait caster, you actually want you know, the guides right on top where the most prominent spine is. Again, that's where the rod's gonna bend. You're gonna have the most backbone. Because what's gonna happen is, is, is if, you're, if you're not dead in alignment, then the rod's gonna wanna twist slightly either way. You're not gonna get the maximum amount of power that that rod can deliver. So you definitely wanna try to spine it. Uh, you know, what's interesting is it, it was very similar to what we do with a golf shaft. No golf shaft is 100% round. So what they will typically do is they will, uh, I used to get all mine, what they call pured. And they would actually put it in a machine and they would kind of twang it. And so what would happen is they would look for that shaft instead of oscillating kind of in, in some of these weird, you know, kind of cross patterns, they wanted it to oscillate up and down as much as possible. And they would then position it you know, they put a little sticker on your on your shaft and say, hey, if you're a right hander, put this sticker up, you know, where your your uh, club face is, is square to this. If you're a left hander, you know, rotate 180 degrees. But what that would do is that would actually make that shaft play as consistent as possible. So we're kind of doing the same thing with a fishing rod, not nearly as much dynamic movement as you'll have in a, in a golf shaft, you know, something that's you know, moving a 200 gram head at, you know, 115 miles an hour sometimes, or, or great, or some of the pros are, you know, in the mid 120s, the guys, you know, on long drive, you know, are in the 140s. But, uh, you know, we don't have anything quite that dynamic in a fishing rod, but it still pays to actually spine the rod. So let's walk, kind of walk through this. So what I do uh, is, I, is I put a towel down on the ground and what I'll do is I actually put a bend in the rod. And then once I've got a bend in the rod, then you can start rotating. I usually try to rotate it with my hand and it's not really wanting to twist very good. It's kind of sliding off my hand tonight. So what I did was I, I just started moving it with my fingers. And what will happen is you'll feel it kind of snap in place. Pow. And so what I did was I tried, I've tried to um, put this tape kind of in the right spot. Let me see. I don't think I have it in the right spot. Bam. Snap. So I think this actually needs to be up a little bit more. Let me do a china marker. This is typically what I do is I, is I use a china marker to get this thing done to, to look at where the spine is. Let me run that again. Hello. But what I'm, what I'm typically trying to do, you know, is find that spot where it just snaps into place. There it is right there. Yeah, so it actually is pretty good right there. So what that mark, what I'll do with that, so if you can see it, I actually put a piece of tape on it and then I just put, you know, a little mark you know, kind of in line. So what I'll do is I make sure that my tip top and my real seat when I'm putting this thing together are lined up in that alignment. And then that way I'll get the maximum amount of power delivered, you know, to that fish when I set the hook or when I'm fighting it. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it is hugely important, but every rod I've done, I did this way. And, you know, they feel great, feel like I have a lot of backbone in them and uh, I'm gonna keep doing it just because I don't think it's going to hurt anything for sure. And I think it may make it actually be a lot more consistent. Okay, so once I've found the spine, then what I start doing is I start laying this thing out and, and seeing how everything fits. So actually, let me go ahead and uh, take these winding checks off. And I always try to make sure I keep everything organized where I know, you know, where things you know, go. So I'm going to put the first winding check kind of to my left. I'm going to put that second winding check in the center. And then this last winding check, um, I'm going to put it on the right. You can usually see by the size, they're, they're different sizes. 
and uh, I'll show you that here in a second with a, a different angle. But uh, so what I want to do is figure out, okay, if I put this thing down, how far am I going to have to push this? You could avoid everything in my garage here. So basically this fits about right there without too much trouble and I've got to get it to here. So I've got to push this thing about 18 inches. I'm actually okay with that. I've had some where they were way up here and I have to push it, you know, several feet down the rod blank. So I'm actually okay with that. I'm not going to ream that one. Let me check this, uh, the foregrip here. Let's see how far I'm going to have to push this sucker down. So this guy, I've got to push him down to right about here, you know, and that one's not going to be hard. You know, that, that I'll only have to, you know, put some glue up to here. So I'm only going to have to put some glue, you know, up just a few feet, you know, away from me, away from where the final resting spot of these are. So that's not bad. I, I'm, I'm good with that. I've had some where I've had to push them a lot farther. And sometimes I think mud holes just sadistic. I think they just send me the wrong thing. They send me stuff that's too tight. But uh, what we have to do now, let me find, oh yeah, I dropped my arbor is this arbor so got a little work to do on the arbor the thing about this arbor is i have to get this thing this doesn't stretch you know the eva stretches actually cork doesn't stretch so cork you actually have to make some adjustments on this until you can actually you know get it down you know on the blank in exactly the right spot that you want and you can have a little bit of play but you don't want a lot so, you know, here I've got a little bit of work to do. So one of the things I have done is I've used the, the smaller reamer. Got a couple of different sizes here. So I've used the smaller reamer, you know, as far as I could use it. And, you know, I still have to get this arbor, you know, down into this area right here of the rod. And you know, frankly, I, I'm going to have to do some adjusting here. Actually, it's going to have to fit, yeah, just past this mark right here. So I've got to get this to come down, you know, maybe another foot. So what we do is we take that back off. Okay, and, and the thing is these reamers are, you know, narrower at the top and then they get steadily wider at the bottom, right? So we have to make sure that we're paying attention. So this is the narrow end of, of the hole that I've reamed out, and this is the wide end. You have to pay attention to that. No. Um, so what you do is you just kind of work this thing in, you know, just with a twisting motion. So I'm gonna go to right about here. I'll knock it out a little bit and I'll definitely clean that out real good just to make sure so let's see where we're at all right looks like we're definitely a lot closer so actually this is just about perfect so if you look my mark for where the the, the foregrip is gonna sit is right here between these two marks and so, you know, I've got just a little bit of play, but it's nice and tight. So that way the glue can sit in there and, and fit really good. Uh, it, it's snug enough that I'm really, you know, pleased with that. And so the nice thing is, you know, now I'll, my real seat will just slide on there. No slop at all. I don't know how well that's going to come out. But basically, you know, this gives me that ability to, to get that real seat locked down really good. So like I said, I think from a workflow perspective, this is going to be, you know, really good. I'm not going to have to clean the rod up as many times. And usually I, I take some acetone or some alcohol uh, and clean it up, you know, after I glue it, glue the snot out of it. But uh, anyway, we got this to the right size, but that's the, this is the same thing you do with cork is you just take that reamer until you can get it down in the right place. And then you stop reaming. So it's kind of an iterative process. You do a little bit, see how it fits. Do a little bit more, see how it fits until you get the right fit at the end. So that's the trick with, with, uh, with cork or, or these arbors. So what we do once we've got
the layout done, the spine is found, um, we've done all our reaming that we need to do, and we know we're going to be able to get this thing laid out. I'm going to make a quick adjustment on this light here. I can tell I'm a little dark, but that's okay. Okay. Hopefully that'll be a little bit better. Um, but what uh, what I typically do, you know, after that is I go ahead and, and get my pro paste out, and uh, I've got a couple of new new uh, jars of that or cups, whatever you want to call these things. But anyway, it comes in two parts. So we have the pro paste adhesive, and then we have the the pro paste hardener. So pretty much all of the the uh, epoxies that I've worked with in both golf and in fishing is there are going to be two parts. There's going to be you know the adhesive, and then there's going to be a hardener component. And typically, it's a 50/50 mix of some kind. With with these, you kind of have to guess a little bit, honestly. Um, you use these little mix sticks, you know, right here. And what you want to do is go ahead and open these up and you want to get an equal amount of pro paste you know on each one and you don't want to mix these obviously because you mix them together they actually will um, <laughs> they actually will glue together you'll have a mess inside your jar so what I try to do is I try to take you know a nice good sized blob on on one side of my my piece of cardboard and you can just cut an old box that's what I do is this was just to keep all those old Amazon boxes you get you know or this heck the the stuff that the rod comes in is is pretty good size so that looks fairly even you know maybe a little bit more hardener there um, I don't know though it's it's probably yeah maybe a little bit. So, and the reality is I always don't, I never mix up enough my first batch. So I, th I think that's pretty even. So what I do is I typically take both mix sticks and then I just start mixing them. Actually, let me go ahead and close these pro pastes up a little bit. So that way we can get those out of the way, keep ourselves somewhat organized here. So what I'll do is I just try to you know, I'll, I'll take both sticks and, and uh, try to get those mixed, but then I may just come down to one here. Get this, make sure I get everything off. And so these mixed sticks you can get, you know, from a golf supply shop or you can get it from a uh, mud hole. You know, I think these came from probably from Golf Works. But, you know, typically what you do is you just get this thing, you know, mixing good and, uh, Make sure that there's no white in there, you know, that it's it's kind of a consistent, almost <laughs> bad as it sounds, almost looks like uh, you've got a cold and you blew your nose, you know, you want that kind of yellowish, snotty looking color, honestly, you know, it's kind of gross, but, you know, it's, it's really the color that you want. Um, you don't want it to still be white, you know, but I try to make sure that I, I get it from the sides and, and, you know, just really try to make sure that it, it's mixed good. So I, I usually you know, we'll do this for at least, I don't know, 45 seconds to a minute, you know, maybe longer. It, it does not hurt to mix it too long. It definitely hurts to not mix it enough. That's for sure. All right. So what I'm going to do, I don't know if we're going to get a great camera angle because my my phone, my phone battery is dying actually. So probably what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I'll probably go ahead and glue the grip pieces on uh, off camera. You can just take my word for what I'm doing or, or what I tell you I'm gonna do. Make sure you get any glue off your hands you know, once you've, you've done that mixing piece, but uh, go ahead and, you know, make sure that that's, you know, good and mixed on there. And so what I'll do is, is like I said, you know, I'll get the, the back part of the grip. I go ahead and make sure that it's, you know, it's ready to roll. I'm going to go ahead and do that one first. So I'll do that one off camera. But as I said, you know, and I'll show you where I glued. I can't at least do that. But then once I'm actually installing it, I don't really have the room 
you know, right here to, to show you exactly what I do. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide it down as far as it'll go. And then I'm going to push it down uh, until it's in place. So let me take a quick measurement here and I'll show you, show you how this is going to work. So I'll just slide it down, you know, as far as it'll go. You know, and I kind of just like mark it with my finger, you know, or just kind of eyeball it. So I'm about, you know, maybe about seven inches down from where I marked my spine. So what I do is I just slide this back up. And what I'll do is I'll make sure that I glue just past that part and you rotate the blank. Let's see, I'll try to get under my active on here. But I just rotate the blank, you know, make sure that I'm trying to get, you know, plenty of glue on the blank. You can always, always clean the, the glue off with a little bit of alcohol in a, in a paper towel or a, I like to use, uh, if, you, if you go to the golf supply shops, if you go get the uh, Kim wipes, um, I really like those a lot because they don't have any, any kind of residue um, at all. They don't have any little fuzzies at all. So they're excellent. But I'm out right now. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just glue all the way down there. All right. Now, once I have glue, you know, all the way up and down, now what I'm going to do is go ahead and, and push this thing down. So I'll do this off camera, but you just put the blank flat on the floor and you just push all the way down in one swift motion. All right, big old bunch of snot on there, essentially, right? So we recycle, go ahead and just get that off, okay? And again, we can clean all this stuff up with a little bit of alcohol. We'll do that before we uh, leave this thing to dry, but yeah, you're, you're gonna get, get messy. And what I try to do is make sure I push that winding check you know, up against, you know, where I'm going. I take my finger, take that off. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty good. But anyway, I just try to get as much of that off as I can. Okay, I'll go ahead and set that down briefly. Always a good idea to have a couple of towels, you know, around paper towels or, or shop towels or something, because you're going to get messy. It's just nature of it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a quick adjustment of my camera here. Okay. So yeah, make sure you have towels around. All right. So once I've done that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my arbor. And this is where the workflow would change, is I would have to actually put tape arbors. I'd have to make sure that I clean the blank really well. And then I'd have to get three, usually three tape arbors, you know, here and leave a gap in between each one so that glue fills in. But here I can use this, this uh, arbor right here and just slide it down into place and it'll be, you know, awesome. So I'll go ahead and get that done. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get some tape on that or some uh, glue on that blank. And again, you, you know, make sure that you're liberal with the glue. As, as you can see, you can recycle it. It's, it's not a problem. So we glue it real good. And what, what you do with, with the real seed or the arbors or things like that, you really can't afford to do this with EVA, but I would certainly do it with, with cork or, um, yeah, with cork. Or I do it with my MHX scripts because I have to ream, I, ha I did have to figure out how to ream those out. But I try to go ahead and, and twist this on so that way I make sure that I get glue all the way around. And then before I push it down on that, that seat or that uh, grip, I'll go ahead and get this cleaned a little bit. All right. 
So now we're, we're dead against that back grip there. All right, so once that's done, then there's a little trick with this uh, reel seat we have to do, is we go ahead and screw it all the way down Clean my hands up a little bit. So what you do is get a little masking tape. We want to make sure that we do not get any glue in these threads at all. That is a big no-no. Because that is a, a disaster waiting to happen. So what we'll do is we go ahead and start, you know, at at the uh, the end here, and then what we'll do is we'll we'll be able to unwrap it, you know, towards where we're we're taking this thing off. So what we do is just make sure that they're they're covered. Because again, we're going to use a lot of glue. All right. All right, so that's good. So now what I'm going to do, now that that's ready to go, I'm going to take some glue, get a liberal amount on my arbor. And the thing about this arbor is it's it's got it's pretty it got pretty good adhesive to it, so it. Uh, it really should, you know, hold well. It's almost got a consistency of sandpaper. So it should hold really good, but I'm, I'm gonna try to make sure I cover every bit of it. Get that taken care of here. All right. And with the tape arbors, um, I would not have done enough glue because you're gonna get, you know, glue basically is gonna fill up between the three the three tape arbors usually you do you know one two and three and it's not solid like this you you leave you know a gap in between each one and uh yeah it's it you need a lot of glue to do it so i think actually this is a pretty good size glue savings too in being able to do it this way certainly a, a time saver for sure all right so then once we get that down there and what we're gonna do is just, well, let me, <laughs> I've got glue on my hand still. Clean that a little bit. Okay. I mean, that's the kind of the trick is to, to keep yourself relatively clean while you're doing this. I'm going to try to recapture any of the glue. I'm just going to let it drip down. But you just make sure that you twist as this thing's going on. And any of the excess glue will pop out. And as you can see, if we had not put the tape on, <laughs> we'd be cleaning, cleaning out of the threads pretty good. But here, we're not going to have to do that. So that's good. But again, we're just kind of spinning this thing on. Okay, and then now here's where the the line for the um, where the spine is actually makes a, a difference. This is where we first actually use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clean the rest of this glue off by my finger for now, just because it's a little bit easier. I can get it a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna get all. There may be a better way to do this, but I I just I just kind of resign myself to getting messy in this part of the the rod building process. This is by far you know the the messiest part that that you're gonna have for sure. You know the rest of it. If you get messy, you you've kind of screwed up. But uh, you know here, yeah, you're probably gonna get a little messy. So so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna peel this tape off. And again, this was kind of our lifesaver, and you see why I'm winding it, you know, toward the, the back grip there. Voila, 
So we have no, no glue there. Go ahead and put, put that in the trash. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna take a little alcohol on here and just clean up just a little bit. And this glue does tend to dry relatively clear. So, but I try to get as much of it, you know, off as I possibly can. Okay. All right. So now I'll have to get another towel in a minute. So now I got to go find my, my mark again. Let's go ahead and move my real seat. So if we look here. And I just eyeball it. I try to get that, that real seat, you know, lined up dead with that mark. Sorry for the blurriness there, but I try to get that real seat lined up dead with that mark. So then that way, um, you know, we're using that spine uh, alignment really well. So now we're going to put, you know, our foregrip on. You know, again, we're just going to take, take some glue onto the blank. And from what I remember, this fit down actually rel relatively close. So I'm not too worried about that. And here, um, if I get a little glue down in that hole, that's actually probably a good thing it is, is it'll help keep the water out, especially salt water. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of glue off my hands again. <laughs> What a, and as you'll notice, when I'm pouring the, the alcohol, and it's just the 91% isopropyl alcohol, you can buy it at Walgreens, CVS, wherever, Walmart, Target. But, uh, you know, I just go ahead and, and try to make sure I keep that clean. And I make sure that when I'm pouring that on my towel, it's nowhere near the glue. Because <laughs> it will uh, break the glue down, as you notice, because I'm using it to clean. So anyway, here, just... Push that down in there, and as you noticed, I didn't stop, right? I just kept going. Just push that sucker down, and away we go. And what I may do is put a little bit of this glue right here, because now I need to get my winding check on there. So, go ahead and wipe my hands off. All right, so get my little winding check. I'll go ahead and get that put on here. Huh. All right, and you notice it doesn't quite go all the way down either, but what we can do is just slide that down Push that right down against the grip. Remove any of the excess stuff. And then we'll take some alcohol and clean that up. I have it all over my hands. Yeah, you have to really wash your hands good after this. For any of you that have built rods, or maybe there's a custom rod builder that's uh, sitting here watching this, and they're, like, they're probably like shaking their fist at me. If, if you have better tips to, to not get so, so nasty from the glue, I, I'm all ears. I would love to hear a way to not get so nasty, but... You know, for me, I just I never used to get this gross when I was uh, doing golf clubs, but <laughs> doing fishing rods, it's it's tough. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to make sure that I don't 
um, erase that mark that I made for the spine because I need to make sure that even after all this cleanup work that everything is still in great alignment and that you know that's going to be really important there sorry this my phone keeps wanting to to autofocus and if I move around certain ways it blur it gets really blurry so hopefully I can edit some of that out all right so like I said I just try to get you know get the blank as, as cleaned up as I possibly can you know leave my mark for the for the spine and just get everything else you know nice and cleaned off And a lot of times what I do is, is for the, with the China marker, is I'll, I'll go ahead and mark, you know, up the blank a little bit, you know, as well, just to try to get a couple of marks in case I happen to erase that one. You know, I try to keep it in mind. Actually, I'm a little off on that one. going too far left here. Okay. So anyway, once I do that, then what I can do is get the butt cap taken care of. Go ahead and make sure we install the winding check first. You know, and, and probably if I was thinking a little more, I would have done the, the winding check from the other side because sometimes it won't even fit on coming from this side and I've actually broken them a few times. All right, so we'll go ahead and get that taken care of. All right, again, a little bit of glue. And the butt cap, you usually don't have to worry too much. I mean, it just slides on. There's not a lot of sizing craziness you have to do. No alignment stuff you have to mess with. So a little bit under this winding check. So I'll just push that, that winding check down good. In a way it's good and tight on the butt cap. So that's really it for the gluing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this rod up real good and uh, make sure that my reel seat is in a line with my spine and then I just got to wait for it to dry and uh, we'll come back and check it probably sometime you know noon time tomorrow. It's about nine o'clock Saturday evening so probably about noon on Sunday. Um, this will be, you know, glued up and ready to go. Won't be, re wouldn't be ready to fish, but it would at least be ready to continue working. All right, so let's go check and see how well our uh, rod set up overnight, and we'll talk about next steps. Let me flip this camera around out of selfie mode. I don't know if I can do it. Actually, I'm gonna see a little cut. I'm gonna flip it around, and uh, we're gonna take a look. Okay, so looks like everything. Obviously stayed together, it's good. So what I usually come out and do is I make sure that I, I look at this glue. And as you can see, it definitely set up overnight. Um, what I always do is I put that stick there and make sure that it is absolutely stuck to the uh, cardboard. And that way I know I have a good, a good glue seal. So now what we get to do is we get to start looking at thread. So let's see, let me move to my guides, this little hook keeper. So now what I'm thinking about, let's see, I've got blue, I have red, and I just got some white thread. I'll color fast so I won't have to put any thread conditioner on there. But what I'm starting to think about now is how exactly do I want to wrap this rod? 
So I've got a couple places here. And here I can do some decorative wrapping for the hook keeper here and here. And then for my guides, for all the guides, I can uh, go ahead and, and think about how I want to do this. So let me give you a couple of examples. Let me see what I've got here. So here's the, the top half of my surf rod. So I'm going to zoom in. Let's see if I can get the light correct. But right here, I did an olive branch pattern. So I've thought about, you know, potentially doing something like that on here with, with some of these thread colors. Let's see, I'll get the bottom half of this rod. A couple of other examples. I can do some striping, you know, something like that. Let's see. I can do some thicker striping. Um, just trying to think about, you know, what is it I'm going to do next? To me, this is always kind of the fun part. Even though wrapping guides is a little bit tedious, especially if you're doing it all by hand. But, uh, you know, I really want to start thinking about, and, and maybe I can just get some feedback from everybody, like, what would you do? So I'm, I'm really thinking red, white, and blue combinations. I've got some ideas of what I think I might want to do. But, um, or here, I'll, I'll actually show you all the other colors I have. So I've got, you know, I've got orange, I've got silver, gold, bronze, tiger you know neon green got all kinds of crazy ones to me i i think i want to stay with this american flag theme here so any suggestions you guys have you know do i do an olive branch do i do some you know some thicker stripes do i use all three colors which is going to be a little tricky but uh potentially able to do you know what what should i do here so you guys help me figure it out and we'll start wrapping it next week